Hey, welcome back to the Care Day Side Channel. This is the evening of what? What's the evening? Yes, it's the evening of Sunday, January the first, twenty twenty-two. We're going to begin the new year by taking another online course, what's called the World Quant University. That's a data science module, which is built around uh, uh, Python programming and HQF, from what I understand. Uh, it is completely tuition free. There is a there is a admissions quiz, but if I pass the quiz. Then you can pass the quiz also. It's also let's point out that it is that it is uh, self-paced, eight modules, uh, four projects per module, I believe. And that's just uh, I'll be back in like 15 minutes to get this get the first module underway. Okay. Thank 
Okay. Welcome back. Let's begin uh, to look into the World Quant University Module One of their Data Science Lab project. Okay. Get rid of this. Let's close this. Now, we actually we actually got farther in this last night. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to skip forward here. Project. Forum. Let's take a look at the forum here. People are asking questions actually. Okay. Project One Forum Overview. Virtual Machine Orientation. So we actually did this also. After hours are scheduled, or office hours are scheduled. Here's a, a office hours recordings. How long is this? 59 minutes, we're probably not going to watch that. Open virtual machine. Okay. Oh, this is Jupiter Labs. Okay, good. Okay. So as you can see, we got data. Just take a look at this. Data. Data. Okay. Mexico. Images. Okay. 
less than one's tabula. All right. And we did watch this last night. Let's just watch it again. This is four minutes, so let's watch this again. Let's begin thinking about the idea of tabular data. So I'm going to scroll down and look at this first image, and let's just say that we have a data set with five different properties in it, five different houses. And uh, each of those houses has three characteristics, or we'll call them features. We have the price, we have the number of rooms, and then we also have the area in square meters. Oh, by the way, and price is in US dollars. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is the following. Notice that our first house, we're labeling it zero, all right? And this is an important thing to keep in mind when you're working with data structures in Python. Our first item, we always use zero to refer to our first item. The first question we'll ask ourselves is, how are we going to organize this data set? How are we going to structure it using, you know, our Python skills? so that we can perform analyses on this data set. What is the data paradigm we're going to be using? And if I scroll down here, the uh, paradigm that we're going to be using is the idea of tabular data. Now, what do I mean when I say tabular data? Well, let me zoom in here real quick. There we go. Let me get that in the right place. Beautiful. All right. Now, what does tabular data mean? Well, uh, what it means is that each row here, each row, each row is a single house in our data set. So we have one, two, three, four, five houses in our data set. And then for each row, each house, each observation, remember that word, we have three columns or three features. We have price, we have the number of rooms, and then we have the area of the property in square meters. If you've worked with a spreadsheet before, this is basically a spreadsheet. Although with a, you know, with like a big data set, it's going to be a really, really big data set, uh, a spreadsheet. It's not going to fit on your uh, screen. Another term you'll hear uh, to refer to this sort of tabular data is also structured data. And what does that mean? Well, that means that we have five rows or five observations and each of those observations must have, the way that we are designing this, they must have three features or three columns associated with them. So if we're missing information in one of these, if we have a house where it doesn't have area, we have to treat that as a missing value. It's like a blank cell. So that's the idea of structured data. Every row has to have an entry for every single column, or every observation has to have every single feature. The other thing that I want you all to keep in mind is that when we're, when we've organized our data in this tabular format, all of a sudden we're dealing with rows and columns when we want to do different calculations. For example, let's say that I want to know what the mean price is for, um, the houses in my data set. What I would have to do is I'd have to take this entire column and add all these numbers together, and then divide it by the total number of observations. So this would be an example of a column-wise calculation. And when it comes let's to row-wise calculation... take a brief break here. You notice this is, this is Jupyter Labs, okay? So let's let's create YouTube articles. Let's see playlist.
Okay. Okay, subscriptions, library, shorts. But what I want to do here somehow is um, I want to create a Okay, well, what I want to do, I wanted to create a calculations. Well, for example, I might want to calculate the price per square foot. So I would take the price and I would take the area for every single row and I would uh, divide one by the other. I just do a little division here. So that would be an example of a row wise calculation. In short, when you organize data using this tabular paradigm, you have rows or observations, and then you have columns or features. And when you do calculations, you either need to be thinking of, am I doing a calculation column-wise, up and down, or am I doing a calculation row-wise, side to side? Okay, so now let's come down here. Uh, information can be come in many forms. Uh, one common way to organize information is a table, okay? <laughs> a table or, or also may also be called a data frame, or I suppose it, it could be a metrics, a metrics also. But we're putting, in Python, you're mainly concerned with uh, data analytics, data science in, in Python, you could be mainly concerned with data frames, okay? Maybe some lists, but data frame. One common way to organize information in the in the table is which uh, a table which is a group of cells organized in columns and rows. Okay, when working with the with this sort of tabular uh, data, it's 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 important to organize rows and columns following the principles of tidy data. What does that mean in case in the case of our data set? Each each row corresponds to a single house in our data set. We call each of these houses an observation. Each each column corresponds to a, a uh, characteristic of the house. We will call these features. Okay, each cell contains uh, only one value. So, whenever you encounter a new data set, make sure your data is tidy. Note: need to add activity here. That's interesting. All right. Tabular data and Python data structures, working with lists. Okay, Python comes with, with several different data structures that uh, that we can use to organize organize tabular data. Let's start with putting a single observation into a list. Okay. There's the list.
So there's a list, and this just simply prints it out. So what's this here then? We have the core concepts we need to think about tabular data. So the next question is, how do we organize that tabular data using some of the data structures that come built in in Python? And the first data structure we're going to be looking at is lists. So let me zoom in here on the old notebook. And we have a, uh, we have the first house in our data set, house number zero. And let's just look at this list before we move on here. So we know that this is a list because it's enclosed in these square brackets or square braces or whatever you want to call them. And then we have one, two, three items. And let's do this with their index positions. This is the item at index position zero, the uh, uh, item at index position one, and the index position at item two. So we have those three items. And then they're separated by commas. So this is how you organize information in a list. And if I run this cell, I'll just highlight this cell and hit shift and enter. And we can see that this has now been saved into memory. And I have this output here in my notebook. Now let's take this idea and bring it down to our first task. What we want to do is we want to calculate the price per square meter of this first property. All right using some of our list skills. So let me first just highlight all of this code and I'm going to comment it out. And what I'll start with is let's start with our house zero list. There we go. I use tab complete there, by the way. So there is my list. And if I want to get a particular item out from it, the first item I want is I want the price. So I'm going to use square brackets. And then inside those square brackets, I'll use that index position. And I know that this is at index position zero. So I'll put that in and run this cell. And voila, I have the value that I need. And then the next thing that I need to do, let's just do this down below. I have house zero list. The next item I need is this number of square meters, 128. And that's at index position one. So let me run that. There it is. Beautiful. And now if I want to calculate the price per square meter, I'll just take that uh, number of square meters and just divide. So I'm dividing the price of the house by the number of square meters. I'll run that and I get 905. Beautiful. Now I'm feeling confident. I'm going to uncomment out this code. And I'll take what I've written. And I will paste it here and assign it to the variable house zero price square meters. And then I'll run this cell and voila, we have our price per square meters for our first house using a list. Okay. What is a list? Well, a list is just a, is just a one dimensional uh, data structure where all, where, where, where the columns are all related. When one row has contains related columns, access an item. Access, let's see, one metric that people in real estate industry look at is the price per square meter. Okay, so what's a list? Access an item in lists using Python, perform basic arithmetic. Okay. Okay. And what's this here now? Uh, next, use the append method to add a price per square meter to the end.
Our next task is we want to take that calculation we made and we want to append it to our list. So we have all that whole row, that whole uh, everything for that observation together in one kind of package. So let's see here. How do I do that? Well, here's my house zero list. I'll hit shift and enter. And let me zoom in so it's a little bit easier to see. Beautiful. And I'll just scroll up a little bit so we can see what we did last time. Excellent. And what I want to do is I want to take this value, house zero price, and I want to add it to my list. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the append method. So what I'll do is I'll take the name of the list onto which I want to append that item. I will uh, put a period there and then append. And then inside these, uh, cur these, uh, parentheticals or these, uh, curved brackets or whatever we call them, I'm going to take the variable name, which I just, uh, created up above and I will append that there. And then let me just output that list so that I can see that it worked. So hopefully what I'll see here in the output is I'll see a list with not three items, but four items. And that fourth item is going to be this 905. And there we go. I've did it. Now I can see that if I want to add information to an observation that's stored as a list, I can use that append method. Okay, good. Now, now, now that you, you can work with data for a single house, let's think about how, about how to organize the whole data set. One option would be to create a list for each observation and then put, put, yes, you heard me correctly, then put those together into another list called a nested list. Yeah, but that's not very, but that's not any fun. Honestly. That does work, right? You just put, just put a list inside of a list. I wonder if anybody's live on. Again, I was mentioning this is the World Quant University. It's the data science, uh, what's it called, the data science curriculum. Uh, this is the first project, the first module, first project. It has to do with housing prices in Mexico, okay? Now, right? That'll work. Called a nested list. Now, now that we have more observations, it doesn't make sense to create, to calculate the price per square meter for each house one by one. Instead, we can automate this repetitive task with a for loop. Can't you just add it on to the end? Okay.
We've got one house stored in a list, but if we want tabular data, what we need is to have all of our houses kind of packaged together, several rows and each row being a house. So how do we do that using lists? Well, we use something called a nested list. Let me zoom in here and just give you a little of a tour. So here we have a list. Again, it we have the open and close square brackets that, you know, enclose the list. And then we have commas to separate all of these items from each other. And the only difference from the list we saw before is that instead of having individual values as the items in the list, we have other lists. So basically we have a list of lists. And each sublist for, you know, good term to use, we'll use sublist, all right? Each sublist constitutes a row in that tabular data, all right? So now that we have that set, let me run this cell. And there we can see here is our tabular data. And it's even looking a little tabular. So we're going in the right direction. And let's take that information with us into um, task number three. So I'm going to scroll down here. There we go. Beautiful. For this task, we want to do what we did previously, which is calculate the price per square foot for a property and then append that value onto the, the list. But we want to do it with our entire data set, with all five properties. So how do we do that? We need to iterate through the properties one by one. And a great way to iterate or step through items uh, in a list is to use a for loop. So let's see how we would use a for loop here. I'm going to comment out this houses nested list, and I'm just going to create a for loop. So with a for loop, you always start with four. And after four, I'm going to use the variable name house. So this is the name we'll use to refer to each individual property as we iterate through the list. So I have four and then that variable name and then in. And then lastly, I have the thing that I want to iterate through, which in this case is houses nested list. So here is my for loop. I'll end it with a colon and then I'll hit enter and notice that this Jupyter Notebook automatically uh, puts a little indent. So everything here that's indented is occurring inside the for loop. Now, just to see that this for loop is working, I'm going to put in a little print command and I'm going to say print house. So what should happen is for each of these, um, for each of the properties in our nested list, it should just print out that row. So if I hit shift and enter, I can see voila, here is each individual property. And now that I know that my for loop is working, I need to do some of that calculation work that we did up above. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, price and we'll call it meter squared. So this is where I will be uh, calculating the price per square meter. And then I just need to kind of rethink that code that I did above, where I'll take the first item for each house, which is in this case going to be the price or the price. And then I'm going to divide it by house and then the second item, the item at index position one, the number of square feet. Let's just see if that works. I'm going to just print out price per square meter. So that first number should be what, 905? And then the other ones will follow. There we go. Beautiful, 905, 231. Excellent work. And now I need to take that value and I need to append it back to the list. So what I'll do is I'll do house.append and then I'll have my uh, brace, curly braces here or my parentheses here, and I'll just append that to the list. Beautiful. And then I think I can uncomment out that last printout. I'll make sure it's outdented so it's not in the for loop. And if I run this, what we'll see is, voila, we have five properties, and each of them have the price per square foot. So using that for loop, we're able to go row by row by row and perform that row wise calculation. Okay. 
So they're saying four houses I'll be back in like five minutes. I'm going to go to the little, little data scientist room here. You know, questions, comments, just stop right on by the old chat session here, okay? So, we have this. But it did work, didn't it? All right. So now what we want to do is we want to perform that calculation. We've got one house stored in a list, but if we want tabular data, what we need is to have all of our houses kind of packaged together, several rows and each row being a house. So how do we do that using lists? Well, we use something called a nested list. Let me zoom in here and just give you a little of a tour. So here we have a list. Again, it we have the open and close square brackets that, you know, enclose the list. And then we have commas to separate all of these items from each other. 
And the only difference from the list we saw before is that instead of having individual values as the items in the list, we have other lists. So basically we have a list of lists. And each sublist for, you know, good term to use, we'll use sublist, all right? Each sublist constitutes a row in that tabular data, all right? So now that we have that set, let me run this cell. And there we can see here is our tabular data. And it's even looking a little tabular. So we're going in the right direction. And let's take that information with us into um, task number three. So I'm going to scroll down here. There we go. Beautiful. For this task, we want to do what we did previously, which is calculate the price per square foot for a property and then append that value onto the, the list. But we want to do it with our entire data set, with all five properties. So how do we do that? We need to iterate through the property. So we've got this. one by one, and a great way to iterate or step through items uh, in a list is to use a for loop. So let's see how we would use a for loop here. I'm going to comment out this houses nested list, and I'm just going to create a for loop. So with a for loop, you always start with four, and after four, I'm going to use the variable name house. So this is the name we'll use to refer to each individual property as we iterate through the list. So I have for and then that variable name and then in and then lastly I have the thing that I want to iterate through which in this case is houses nested list. So here is my for loop. I'll end it with a colon and then I'll hit enter and notice that this Jupyter Notebook automatically uh, puts a little indent. So everything here that's indented is occurring inside the for loop. Now, just to see that this for loop is working, I'm going to put in a little print command and I'm going to say print house. So what should happen is for each of these, um, for each of the properties in our nested list, it should just print out that row. So if I hit shift and enter, I can see voila, here is each individual property. And now that I know that my for loop Okay, good. Loop is working. I need to do some of that calculation work that we did up above. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, price and we'll call it meter squared. So this is where I will be uh, calculating the price per square meter. And then I just need to kind of rethink that code that I did above where I'll take the first item for each house, which is in this case going to be the price or the price. And then I'm going to divide it by house and then the second item, the item at index position oh, one, okay. the number of square feet. So I'm down here.
Let's just see if that works. I'm going to just print out price per square meter. So that first number should be what, 905? And then the other ones will follow. There we go. Beautiful, 905, 231. Excellent work. And now I need to take that value and I need to append it back to the list. So what Now, could we simply say house this or house a pen? What I'll do is I'll do house dot append, and then I'll have my uh, brace curly braces here, or my parentheses here, and I'll just append that to the list. Beautiful. And it worked perfectly, Dennis. Very good. And then I think I can uncomment out that last printout. I'll make sure it's outdented so it's not in the for loop. And if I run this, what we'll see is voila, we have five properties and each of them have excellent the price per square foot. So using that for loop, we're able to go row by row by row and perform that row wise calculation. Okay, what is a loop? Now, here we go, here we go, okay. Lists are, are a good way to organize data, but one drawback is that it can only represent values. Why is that a problem? For example, someone looking at a wouldn't, wouldn't know which value uh, corresponds to price, area, et cetera. A better option might be, be a dictionary, where each value is associated with, uh, with a key. Here is what house zero looks like in a dictionary. We've been looking at lists a lot right now, and it's pretty good to use these nested lists because you can kind of see 
that it's actually like in a tabular format, but there's kind of a drawback, which is I don't really know what any of these numbers mean. So if I'm seeing this data for the first time, I have no idea that 905 is like price per square meter or that this is price in US dollars. So maybe there's a way where I can not only have the values here, but I can also have some information about what those values actually stand for. And that's where we're going to move from lists to dictionaries. So let me scroll down here. All right. And I'm going to zoom in on the code and let's look at this first dictionary. And this is going to be again, that first property house zero, but now we're going to store the information as a, in a dictionary and not a list. So let me pull out my paintbrush and we can see that this is a dictionary because we have these curly braces on either side, enclosing the information. And then inside it, we have what are called key value pairs. So the keys are the names that are here as strings. And then the values are the actual, well, values. And we can see that they're separated by a colon. So I see two people watching here today. If you are watching the background, thanks for stopping by. I generally stream uh, Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Uh, New York Eastern U.S. time, New York time. And I sometimes, uh, uh, as you can see, pro, uh, uh, do a little bit on Sunday night also, okay? But if you are those two people, again, thanks so much. But hey, but do me a favor. Of course, you know, click that subscribe button. Click the bell button so you'll be notified whenever I go live. And also stop by the chat session and just say hi, okay? All right, so we have we have three key value pairs, and we can see exactly what, for example, this um, 115,000 means. We know that it's the approximate price in US dollars. Same thing for surface area, same thing for number of rooms. So if I hit shift and enter and save this into memory, we can see that now I have another observation, another row, but I can also see kind of what the columns are for each row. Now that we're experts in dictionaries, let's see if we can do the same calculation we did when we were storing our uh, housing data in a list. Namely, let's look at price per square meter. So I'm going to comment out the starter code that we have here. And let's just concentrate on pulling values out of the dictionary. So I'll just add the variable name house zero dict. And the first piece of information I want from that dictionary is I want the price approximate USD. So instead of using like integers 0, 1, 2, I use the key name. And what I get back is the value associated with that key name. So there we go. Beautiful. And then the next thing I'm going to want is let's get that house zero dict. I want the surface area covered. So I'll use those square brackets and then surface area covered. There we go. There's my 128. And then if I want to calculate the price per square meter, I can just divide one by the other and we're back at 905. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting because before we had to append that item to the list and we didn't know what it was, you know, you just had to kind of know. But with a dictionary, we can assign that value to a new key. So here in the line of code below, I have a new key, price per square meter. And what I'll do is I'll just take what I wrote before. I will cut it and paste it on the other side of this equal sign. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll just output the new dictionary or the updated dictionary. So I'll hit shift and enter. And we can see now that we have one, two, three, four items in our dictionary. And the last one is price per square meter with that 905. Hmm.
Let's watch just a second. Well, okay, so it's a curly bracket because it's a bracket. So therefore, we we can we can refer right to any any variable directly by its name, right? Okay, good, 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 that worked. We add a new matching pair, matching pair to the, to our, our, our data dictionary. Good, good, good. This way of storing data is so popular that it has its own name. Interesting, JSON. We'll learn more about uh, this later in the course. For now, let's build a, uh, another for loop. But this time, we'll add a uh, a add price per square meter dictionary. Interesting. Okay, good. We can see that there are advantages to using dictionaries. And then like the next question we have to ask ourselves is, 
how do we organize all of those observations into kind of a single package, the same way that we did with nested lists? Well, actually, we use a list again. So we can see here that I have a list. I got my square brackets here. And there are one, two. Let's just take a brief detour here, shall we? Okay. Let's come back over. Let's just come over and, and cancel all these. I'm going to go and schedule these for the rest of the week. And, and all the streams this week, who knows, maybe next, uh, are, will be the World Quant University Data Science Lab, okay? Two, three, four, five items in this list and all of those items are dictionaries. So we can see here some curly braces, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Each of these is a dictionary, all right? And we have the uh, price approximate USD key, the surface uh, area covered key, and then the rooms key for all of those observations. So let me just run that cell here, shift and enter. Whoops, I ran the cell above. Let me run the cell below. There we go. And so here is our new uh, data set organized as a list of dictionaries. And by the way, sometimes when you see list of dictionaries like this, they're, al they're also called records, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the point is, is that each of the items in this list is a single observation, a single property. Now I'm going to scroll down here. Let's find, let's see if we can find this down here. Okay, come back over here. Let's just go ahead and uh,
the wall quant universe isn't showing up. There he goes. I've created a new list just for the World Quant Universe. Monday, Tuesday, great new. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one more day to go. Okay, there we go. So now we have all our, all our stream scheduled for the uh, remainder of the week. So let's just come back over here. Uh, what's he doing over here now? Here, And our next task is that we want to use these dictionaries to calculate the price per square meter. So how would this work when we're dealing with a list of dictionaries? It's going to be similar to the way we did it before. So I'm going to do for house in houses row wise and i'm using the tab complete here and then let's just print out house to make sure that it's working and i will comment out this whoops i will comment out this line so that we don't get that output and we should see our one two three four five properties beautiful and then what we need to do is we need to do all that cool stuff we did above in fact you know what i have an idea Let's actually scroll up. Let's take this code and copy it and then paste it down below here. Make sure that it's indented. There we go. 
and we'll need to first change the variable names because the variable name we're going to be using here is house. So I'll change this to house, house, and house. Beautiful. Excellent. And then I can uncomment this and let's run that for loop and see what happens. Hey, Ali, how are you? Beautiful. Doing, Thanks for stopping by. It's a, a happy new year. You can just call me Dave, by the way. Okay, you don't worry about the mister. Uh, I mean, I don't use it, but it's it's, it's fairly popular. I, I use VS Code, but uh, there's nothing wrong with PyCharm. What I'm looking at right now is is what's called World Quant University. Okay, World Quant. What the offer is. A free, a completely free uh, data science certification program, a series of uh, like like eight modules. Okay, it's it's built around it's built around Python. Okay, I'm, I'm actually still in the first session of the first module, talking about you know various form, data types in uh, in Python. I'm sure you can find some videos on PyCharm somewhere on YouTube, okay? We're up to the point now where we've created a dictionary of housing data. Now we're going to, now we're going to calculate and append the, uh, the price per meter, square meter, onto, onto the end of each row of the dictionary, okay? And now we have our five properties, and all of these properties have that price per meter squared. So again, we're using that for loop, but we're pulling out that information and doing our row-wise calculations a little bit differently because we're dealing with dictionaries and not lists. Let's go ahead and create our, our data dictionary here, right? Dictionary? Yeah. There's our dictionary. So what we wanted to do is So what have you been working on this past week? I also started a course on Fortran on Udemy this week also, by the way. Yeah, but not to worry. We're, we're we're very close to getting to uh, to uh, <laughs> the data frames. Okay, um, probably probably pandas data frames. Okay.
Uh, as you can see here, they're actually using Jupyter Notebooks online for the courses. Uh, this, this, you can see this first module has, you know, one, two, three, four, four uh, sections and, and, and an assignment. All right. Let's watch this up here one more time, make sure we get the loop right. We can see that there are advantages to using dictionaries. And then like the next question we have to ask ourselves is, how do we organize all of those observations into kind of a single package, the same way that we did with nested lists? Well, actually we use a list again. So we can see here that I have a list. I got my square brackets here. And there are one, two, three, four, five items in this list. And all of those items are dictionaries. So we can see here some curly braces, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Each of these is a dictionary. All right. And we have the uh, price approximate USD key, the surface uh, area covered key, and then the rooms key for all of those observations. So let me just run that cell here. Shift and enter. Whoops, I ran the cell above. Let me run the cell below. There we go. And so here is our new uh, data set organized as a list of dictionaries. And by the way, sometimes when you see list of dictionaries like this, they're, al they're also called records. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the point is, is that each of the items in this list is a single observation, a single property. Now I'm going to scroll down here and our next task is that we want to use these dictionaries to calculate the price per square meter. So how would this work when we're dealing with a list of dictionaries? It's going to be similar to the way we did it before. So I'm going to do for house in houses row wise and I'm using the tab complete here. And then let's just print out house to make sure that it's working. And I will comment out this, whoops, I will comment out this line. Okay. All right. And there's our list. So that we don't get that output. There's our list. And we should see our dictionary. one, two, three, four, five properties. Beautiful. And then what we need to do is we need to do all that cool stuff we did above. In fact, you know what? I have an idea. Let's actually scroll up. Let's take this code mm -hmm. and copy it and then paste it down below here. Make sure that it's indented. There we go. And we'll need to first change the variable names because the variable name we're going to be using here is house. So I'll change. Okay, so let's come back up here, right? So this should be house, right? Attendance, oh jeez, that, uh, that sounds like fun, attendance monitoring system. Uh, how how is the data how's the data being collected? How are you actually tracking the uh, the attendance monitoring system itself? In houses row wise, and I'm using the tab complete here, and then let's just. 
Okay, so this should just be house, right? print out house to make sure that it's working and I will comment out this whoops I will comment out this line so that we don't get that output and we should see our one two three four five properties beautiful and then what we need to do is we need to do all that cool stuff we did above in fact you know what I have an idea let's actually scroll up let's take this so all the all this introductory stuff here is all is is all is all old hat to you, right? Code and copy it and then paste it down below here. Make sure that it's indented. There we go. Uh, well, to a certain extent, they're, they're related. I mean, you, you can you, you can you can do a, a cloud application that, that that includes visualization also. Uh, cloud-based application. That's an interesting question, though. Um, What would the cloud-based application involve? And we'll need to first change the variable names because the variable name we're going to be using here is house. So I'll change this to house, house, and house. Beautiful. Excellent. And then I can uncomment this and let's run that for loop and see what happens. Beautiful. And now. Uh, you know, I would say that that would be a, a safe bet. Although, uh, uh, although, although cloud, uh, cloud uh, applications are a pretty hot topic right now also. Uh, have you, have you done a lot of data visualization before? You did another project of data visualization? Oh no.
Okay. Uh, you know, in that case, I would say probably, uh, I would probably go to data, data visualization because that's really important starting out in data analytics to be able to do, to analyze and visualize data. I mean, so, so, sometimes the uh, a cloud application is just, just the same thing running on the cloud. <laughs> okay. It says here, line two, type error. So it's saying it's not like, it doesn't like that. That sure looks the same, doesn't it? Well, sure, I could take a look at it. all my Python skills are pretty basic. Sounds good. You 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 can you can always send your Python, you know. It, 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 you, you can attach your code if you want to your notebook to a you know to a Facebook message and just Facebook message it to me, okay? Keep in mind, like I said, I, my, my my Python skills are pretty basic, okay? Hmm. So am I missing a quote here someplace? It sure doesn't look like it, does it? Yeah, I'll be streaming at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. Eastern Time, Monday through Thursday this week, all right? Change this to house. House and house. Beautiful. That sure looks like what I'm doing also, doesn't it? Hmm. Oh, you know what the problem is? I don't have a house here. There's our prices. Okay, very good. Excellent. And then I can uncomment this and let's run that for loop and see what happens. Beautiful. And now we have our five properties and all of these properties have that price per meter squared. So again, we're using that for loop but we're pulling out that information and doing our row-wise calculations a little bit differently because we're dealing with dictionaries and not lists.
Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and we'll finish this first mo this first session here tonight. Take a break and come back and uh, you know, see what I, and then maybe go back and look at some uh, at some Fortran at a at a video of some type. Okay. Hey, uh, Raghu Ram, uh, thanks for stopping by. Happy New Year's. I'll mention uh, I, uh, I will be streaming this week at 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. That's New York or Eastern time for you outside the U.S. Uh, what I'm currently looking at here is what's called Quant uh, World Quant University. Okay, and they offer a free course, a curriculum on for data science using Python, or mostly Python. And I'm in the first, the first. This is the first session of the first module. Okay, and we're just and in uh, this model, we'll go from list to uh, data frames. All right. So as you can see, calculating the mean price, row wise dictionary. Okay, so so now we have, so our dictionary now includes the the price. Or square meter. But what we want to know is the calculating the mean price. Okay, this is so interesting. Let's see what this says here. So tell me, uh, Ragu, what have you been up to? Up until now, we've been doing row-wise calculations, price per square meter. Well, now what we want to look at is we want to see if we can do some column-wise operations. In this case, we want to look at the mean house price. So if you all will indulge me, I'm going to scroll up here, don't get seasick, to our beautiful picture. And what we want to do is we want to take this whole column and we want to add all those umber, numbers up and then divide it by the number of observations. All right. So before we were working side to side, now we're working up down. All right. Beautiful. Let's clear this out and then let's scroll back down to where we were. Hold on. There we go. Back to task six. Okay. And the question is, how will we do this with our list of dictionaries? So, hmm, let's comment out some of this code and we'll just kind of, we'll just kind of work with it bit by bit. Now, the first thing that I really want is I want to have a list with all of the house prices in it. So I have dictionaries and for each dictionary, I want to pull out the price and I want to put it into Okay, that's right. You you had an interview. Didn't you have an interview for the job?
Of, of course, you know, the old saying is every no brings you closer to a yes. I'm not sure that's actually true, but it's, it sounds it sounds good. <laughs> to a list. And then once I have it in a list, I can do some of those column-wise calculations that I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with an empty list, all right, called house prices, and then I'm going to iterate through that list of dictionaries. And what I'll do is, let's see here, I'll go house, and then what is it? Price approximate USD. So price approx USD. And I want to take this value, let's actually just print this out to make sure that our list is working, our for loop is working. There we go. All right, it's not working. Now, I got this key error here, and it says that, huh. Now, when you get a key error, what it means is I'm telling Python to look for a, uh, you know, a key inside a dictionary under this did you get a, uh, you had a first interview, right? Did, did you actually have an interview for, for a job? Didn't you? And what you, uh... Hmm. name and when i get a key error back it's saying hey i don't see anything in the dictionary with that name so i don't know what you're talking about my friend so if i scroll up here i can see that let's see here i'll do price approximate usd maybe i have the wrong title here and we'll see that in effect i misspelled approx i used two p's when I just wanted to use uh, one. And now if I rerun that code, I can see, aha, here are my five home values. And now that I have that information, what I want to do is I want to take house prices and I want to dot append to that list the price of each of in individual house. So if I do that, and then at the end of this for loop, I then uh, get the output of that list, we can see that, voila, I have all five properties, or all five property prices, in a single list. And once I have that, I can do all sorts of cool stuff. For example, I can take the sum of that value, which is something that I need. I can see that this is the price of all the houses if I bought them all at once. And then I also want to see how many items are in the list, so I can use the length uh, command and it will give me five. And I can use those two things. Mm -hmm. We do have that up here. There's the mean. I'll be right back. I'm going to give me a, a quick snack here. <laughs> Well, the good news for me is that I've, I've lost about 14 pounds since I've gone on the Nutrisystem diet uh, back in the middle of November. I've also begun a, uh, a resistance or 
exercise band program also to hopefully try to, you know, just try to uh, strengthen myself a little bit. Good to get any more interviews on tap. Okay. We created an empty dictionary. Now we're, now we're looping through our house tables. Okay.
Mm. Oh, Medallion's Dying's streaming now. Very nice. I just kind of keep an eye on that rascal. I don't know if you follow uh, Medallion Stein or not, but he 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 he's actually streaming live on Twitch right now. He's a Python programmer, data scientist, data analyst. This is what I had as my goals last year. Uh, I made I have main goals. Well. No, oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's true. I, I only only friends and fr uh, only friends could see it. Uh. I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you if you search for it directly, you may find it. Uh, what what what's your Facebook handle again? Let's see if I can find you. Yeah, but we just highlight this portion right here. Let's comment out this.
Hmm. Right. Well, what you can do is send me a message to Facebook Messenger, okay? Then I then I'll be able to see your your profile. So so just so send a send a message from Facebook to. All right, then I'll be able to see this. Then I'll be able to actually see see your 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 uh, Facebook handle. All right, that appeared to work. Things to let me comment out this or uh, put that code back in. I can take the sum and divide it by that number, the number of observations, and that will give me my mean house price. So if I uncomment that last line of code and hit shift and enter, voila, we can see that our mean house price is around sixty-two, sixty-three thousand uh, dollars. Okay, so this appears to work now. Up until now, we've been doing. Yes, yeah, send, send me a message on Facebook Messenger. All right. Okay, let's see if we can find you here. Okay, are you the are are you the one listed as an artist? Is this you up here at the very top? Oh, is this you up here then? Is this you?
Let me see if I can do that for you. Let me see. See if that works, okay? Well, there you are. I did. I did accept. Okay, so we're getting we're getting close to the end of day uh, day one here. Okay. Now, one way to make this sort of calculation easier is to organize our data by features instead of by observation. We'll still use dictionaries and lists, but we'll we'll implement them as slightly different column wise. Okay, this makes sense. I get it. I guess. So let's run this as expected. At this point in the lesson, we've organized our data set as a list of dictionaries. And on the one hand, that's made it pretty easy to do row-wise calculations. For example, when we wanted to calculate the price per square meter for each observation. 
But if I scroll down here, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt to do these column wise calculations. I got it to like calculate it and append it and then put it in a list and then redo the list. And so maybe there's another way to organize this data set so that it's easier to do these column operations. And in fact, there is, let me scroll down here and zoom in and give you a little bit of a tour. There we go. So here's another way to organize our data set. Again, we have a dictionary. And then inside that dictionary, we have the one, two, three columns that are in our data set are the, the three features. And each of those features or each of those keys is associated with a list. And inside that list are the, um, uh, the values for each observation. So what does that mean? Well, before we were organizing our data set like as dictionaries, one, two, three, four. And now we're kind of organizing it more vertically, right? We have one, two, three. All right. So two different ways to organize the same information. With this new idea, like before we had a list with dictionaries in it, now we have a dictionary with lists in it. Let's see if it makes if, how we have to change our coding strategy to do the uh, calculations that we did previously. So the first calculation that we need to do is we need to get the mean house price. And the way to get the mean house price is, let me again comment this stuff out, is that I need to go into my dictionary. So this is B. Oh, wait, you know what? I didn't run this cell above here. Let me run that cell first. There we go. And now I'm going to do houses column wise. Houses column wise. Beautiful. And I then want to get all of the prices. And that's going to be a lot easier because I can just go into price approximate USD and that gives me everything I need. And then I can take that and get the sum. Beautiful. And then I can just divide it by, let me take this here and copy and paste it by the length. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there I can now assign it to that variable name. Awesome. And I'll uncomment everything. There we go. And I'll hit shift and enter and voila. It's a lot easier to do it, right? It's a lot easier to do that column-wise operation when we have our data organized this way. Okay. At this point in the lesson, we've organized... Sure. our data set as a list of dictionaries. And on the one hand, that's made it pretty easy to do row-wise calculations. For example, when we wanted to calculate the price per square meter for each observation. But if I scroll down here, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt to do these column wise calculations. I got it to like calculate it and append it and then put it in a list and then redo the list. And so maybe there's another way to organize this data set so that it's easier to do these column operations. And in fact, there is, let me scroll down here and zoom in and give you a little bit of a tour. There we go. So here's another way to organize our data set. Again, we have a dictionary. And then inside that dictionary, we have the one, two, three columns that are in our data set are the, the three features. And each of those features or each of those keys is associated with a list. And inside that list are the, um, uh, the values for each observation. So what does that mean? Well, before we were organizing our data set like as dictionaries, one, two, three, four. And now we're kind of organizing it more vertically, right? We have one, two, three. 
All right, so two different ways to organize the same information. With this new idea, like before we had a list with dictionaries in it, now we have a dictionary with lists in it. Let's see if it makes if, how we have to change our coding strategy to do the uh, calculations that we did previously. So the first calculation that we need to do is we need to get the mean house price. And the way to get the mean house price is, let me again comment this stuff out, is that I need to go into my dictionary. So this is B, oh wait, you know what? I didn't run this cell above here. Let me run that cell first. There we go. And now I'm going to do houses column wise. Houses column wise. Beautiful. And I then want to get all of the prices. And that's going to be a lot easier because I can just go into price approximate USD and that gives me everything I need. And then I can take that and get the sum. Beautiful. And then I can just divide it by, let me take this. This here and copy and paste it by the length. Beautiful.
Oh, wait, what the couple is here? I miss seeing the bracket. Same results, right? Okay, good. And there, I can now assign it to that variable name. Awesome, and I'll uncomment everything. There we go. And I'll hit Shift and Enter, and voila. Okay, good. So that takes care of that, I think. Allah, it's a lot easier to do it, right? It's a lot easier to do that column-wise operation when we have our data organized this way. Now, now you think this is, you wait till you see how to do it with, with pandas, okay? With, 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 a, with the pandas, okay? Let's come down here. Hmm. All right, last task. Here we are. Let's rock and roll. So what we want to do is, now that we're working with this kind of new data structure, this dictionary full of lists, we've seen that it's easy to do those column operations. How are we going to do Well, it should be the same thing as this. I mean, it should, it should be very close to the thing as this, okay. Now, in order to make price per square meter, all right, right? We shouldn't have to do this because we're not calculating the uh, right. And this over here just needs to be. Well, I think we want to uh, do the calculation for each, the mean price, or the, or the whatever goes there, the prices per square meter again.
we shouldn't need this since we're no longer going an aggregate function, okay? I made this mistake before, house, houses column-wise. Hmm. At this point in the lesson, we've organized our data set as a list of dictionaries. And on the one hand, that's made it pretty easy to do row-wise calculations. For example, when we wanted to calculate the price per square meter, for each observation. But if I scroll down here, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt to do these column-wise calculations. I got it to like calculate it and append it and then put it in a list and then redo the list. And so maybe there's another way to organize this data set so that it's easier to do these column operations. And in fact, there is, let me scroll down here and zoom in and give you a little bit of a tour. There we go. So here's another way to organize our data set. Again, we have a dictionary. And then inside that dictionary, we have the one, two, three columns that are in our data set are the, the three features. And each of those features or each of those keys is associated with a list and inside that list are the um, uh, the values for each observation so what does that mean well before we were organizing our data set like as dictionaries one two three four and now we're kind of organizing it more vertically right we have one two three all right so two different ways to organize the same information with this new idea, like before we had a list with dictionaries in it, now we have a dictionary with lists in it. Let's see if it makes, if, how we have to change our coding strategy to do the uh, calculations that we did previously. So the first calculation that we need to do is we need to get the mean house price. And the way to get the mean house price is, let me again comment this stuff out, is that I need to go into my dictionary. So this is B. Oh, wait, you know what? I didn't run this cell above here. Let me run that cell first. There we go. And now I'm going to do houses column wise. Houses column wise. Beautiful. And I then want to get all of the prices. And that's going to be a lot easier because I can just go into price approximate USD. And that gives me everything I need. And then I can take that and get the the wrong one. <laughs> oh, I did the wrong thing down there, didn't I? All right, last task, here we are, let's rock and roll. So what we wanna do is, now that we're working with this kind of new data structure, this dictionary full of lists, we've seen that it's easy to do those column operations. How are we gonna do those row-wise operations? Well, let's calculate price per square meter. So we need to create kind of a new key value pair that's price per square meter, and then in the value associated that is gonna be a list with all of our um, all of our price per square meter. So let's think how that's going to work. The first thing I need to do is I need to get the prices. So I'm going to go price and then I will do, let's see here, what is the name of that variable? Houses column wise. Beautiful. I scroll down. There we go. So I'll do houses column wise and I'll get price approximate USD. And if I output that, we can see 
That's the first set of uh, information I need. And then let's create another list called area. And this will be, again, houses column-wise, except we'll pull out the information, the value related with surface area covered. There we go. Beautiful. And now I need to put these two lists together because I need to go kind of through them one by one and uh, perform that little division that we did before. So whenever you have two lists and you kind of need to put them together, the best way to do that is using a command called zip. And if I zip together price and area, I'll hit shift and enter, and you won't see any like recognizable output here. This is what's called an iterator. There's more information about this in the textbook if you're curious. We'll learn more about it later. But if I want to actually show the values that are in this iterator, I can just enclose it in a list and I can see, aha, I have a new data structure here. Let's take a little tour. So I can see that I have a new list. So here's the open bracket and the close bracket. And inside this, I have one, two, three, four, five items. And what those items are is these uh, parentheses. This means that it's a tuple. And a tuple is basically a list. Let's leave it at that. And if you want to get more info, it's in the textbook. But the point is, is now that I have these uh, five items, I basically package together the um, the denominator and the denominator of the uh, of the division that I need to do. So with that in mind, let me just remove this here, and let's create a for loop. So I'll do for. Uh, how do we do this? Let's for now just call this x. So for x in zip, all right, and let's just print out x. And what we can see is that it's printing out those tuples one by one. And this is an interesting thing about Python I'm going to show you is that whenever you're well, iterating... You, as, you, as you'll see in the next session, once you move on to data frames, this is a whole lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just use you, you just attack you attach the the mean the mean say uh, keyword onto into your thing and it's area or you just do a direct division by by going across the rows okay well, here's a question could we do could we perform this using the row wise? Why can't we divide price by?
operating through uh, some sort of iterable, in this case we have this kind of zipped item or this zipped iterator, what you can do is if I know that there are two items in each of the little uh, things I'm stepping through, I can actually declare those variable names here. So for example, I can do A for area and P for uh, price. Oh no, wait, I have this in the wrong order. I'll do P for price and A for area. And let's just see what that looks like. Let's do print price. We'll do P. And then here we'll do, there we go. We'll do area for A. Whoops, there we go. And we can see that, there we go. We have the price and the area for each particular um, property. Once we have that information, we can keep building on what we're doing. So let's just do, um, let's do uh, price meter squared equals P divided by A. And let's just print that out so we know that it's working. Okay, beautiful. And here are my five values. And then the last thing I need to do is I actually need to get this into a list. So let's do that the way we did it before. Let's start with a new list. So let's call this new list price per meter squared. There we go. And let's initialize it as an empty list. And then once we have that information, let's see here. Let's do price per square meter and let's append the value that we've just calculated onto that list. There we go. And let's see what that looks like after it's gone through the entire for loop. Beautiful. So now I have a list of all of the price per square meter calculations. And once I have that, I can just put it into my dictionary. So I can do houses column wise, and then in square brackets, I'll put the name of the new key which in this case is going to be price per square meter, except this is a string, right? It's in quotation marks, beautiful. And I'll set that equal to the list that I just created. So let's see here, I'll do houses column wise, I'll print this out at the end just to make sure it works. And I'll hit shift and enter, and voila. So I have my price approximate, I have my surface area, and then the last item in this dictionary, the last key value pair, is price per square meter with all of the calculations. Okay. Let's just do not to worry, we're getting close to the end of tonight's session. You know what's odd? My uh All I'm going to say is that what you're really doing here is uh,
So this is kind of interesting. This this particular function here. Okay. Okay. The price square meter is P divided by A. Trust me here. Once you, once you, uh, See how easy it is to do with pan with and data frames and pandas. You'll you'll oh yeah. You know, I, I know that Medallion Stallion likes to use. You know, says well, data frames are slower. Okay, data frames are slower. But you know what? It saves a step to work with data frames directly because when you when you when you read a, a data in with pandas, it's put into a data frame. So why you want to take a data frame and turn it back into a list? I don't understand that. But anyway, now I do price per. Append. It's like that, that skip function. This doesn't make any sense. No. Append.
Okay, good. Now we're getting close. One more section to go here for this evening. And data frames. Okay, you've made it to the end of the first lesson. You should be celebrating. Let me put on my cool kid glasses. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are experts now with lists, with dictionaries. We have created lists of dictionaries. We've created lists of lists. We've created dictionaries with lists inside them. And there's one more data structure that I just want to preview. We'll learn more about it in the next lesson, but I just want to preview it now. And that's what's called a pandas data frame. Now, a data frame doesn't come with Python kind of built. It isn't built into Python from the get-go. What it is is it's uh, it's built using another library, and that library is called pandas. So when you use libraries, you're using other people's code and the tools that they've built to help you in your projects. So let me just show you how it works real quick, and then we'll learn more in the next lesson. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import that new library. So I'm importing pandas. Let me zoom in here. Beautiful. And I'm giving it an alias just so that I don't need to keep typing pandas, 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 pandas all over again. And the common convention is to call it pd. So import pandas as pd. Next, I have that same dictionary full of lists that we've been working with towards the end of the lesson. So this is our, uh, you know, this is our data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that data and I'm putting it inside what's called a pandas data frame and creating a data frame called DF houses, DF houses. And if I hit shift and enter and show you the output of that data frame, we can see that this looks exactly like that tabular data uh, visualization that we saw at the beginning of the lesson. We have our five observations. Each observation has an index label starting at zero. Remember, everything starts at zero in Python. And then we also have our one, two, three columns. 
All right. So this is a really good way to organize tabular data. Uh, Pandas is a very powerful tool. And what I'm going to be showing you in the next lesson is how you can do a lot of what we've done here using Pandas. But for now, you should give yourself a pat on the back. You're good with lists, you're good with dictionaries, you're good with for loops, and you can take all of that information with you into the next lesson where we talk more about data frames. And with that, my dear friends, I'm going to bring this evening session to a close. I'll see you all back over hopefully tomorrow evening, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll continue to work our way through this uh, world quant university, okay?